Hello, it's Andy, and for today's Backyard Adventure, we're going to talk about the Abutilon, which is also referred to as a flowering maple and um, uh, Chinese lantern. You'll see kind of those terms thrown out there. Uh, if you're ever walking around a nursery, and sometimes they're in the kind of covered, uh, protected area, depending on your weather, uh, you'll see these things out kind of, uh, they're very attractive to the eye. They catch the eye. Uh, hummingbirds also love them. But they've got these kind of papery, crepe-like flowers on, uh, and then these uh, just bright green, kind of maple-looking leaves, hence the flowering maple uh, reference. So we're going to talk about that today. I've got three parts. We're going to talk about kind of care and just kind of owning those. We're going to talk about propagation. And then I've had some problems uh, with some of mine that I want to share some of the things I've learned. So we'll tackle a couple uh, tips about uh, kind of dealing with some different issues that uh, you might have. So hopefully this video is helpful for you today. So as we dive into the abutilon, uh, that's kind of the technical term for them, uh, there are different uh, varieties. You can get them in yellow, peachish color, there's red, and then there's this really cool one I'll show you here in a second. It's called the red tiger. Um, this red tiger is a... Uh, um, it's got kind of this veiny look, but all of these have this like papery looking uh, kind of umbrella um, lantern look and that's a really cool flower and they just keep flowering all throughout the growing season and if you're in a warmer climate, I'm in the Seattle area, so kind of in the northwest uh, zones and uh, we have to in the winter time either bring them inside or uh, it's kind of hit and miss on whether they will survive the winter. But uh, in warmer climates, they can flower all year long as long as you uh, keep watering and fertilizing them, taking care of them. But up here, uh, typically in the winter, if you're going to keep these things as kind of a, a perennial, you're going to move them into a protected area or into the house and then uh, you can bring them back out in the summertime. And they are just beautiful. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the hummingbirds love them. Uh, they're really eye-catching and kind of a fun plant to grow. And they're not super difficult. So uh, let me take you in and kind of show you a couple things about them. Uh, first off, you're going to notice that the, uh, the leaves, they have this like maple look. And that's where they get the flowering maple term. Uh, they are not related to maple trees, but uh, just with that look. Uh, and kind of the tree-like shape. Uh, that's kind of one of the nicknames they've caught on to. But uh, these green leaves, they're beautiful um, and just kind of vibrant. And they'll just keep growing um, new branches. Uh, you can prune these back pretty easily. These things can grow big or small and uh, they'll just keep kicking flowers out all over them. So this is the Lucky Red Lantern. And um, so this variety is just kind of, kind of the solid leaf. Let me zoom in here. So you can see here as I zoom in, uh, kind of a beautiful red with this uh, little pot in the middle. It's kind of a lantern, umbrella looking thing. Um, just a real cool shape. And as the hummingbirds come out in the morning or at night, uh, they love to come in there and just kind of check them out and see what's going on. So uh, kind of along with fuchsias, these are kind of my two main hummingbird flowers this year. With the abutilon as far as the care, uh, they're a fairly simple, easy plant to take care of. Uh, during the growing season. Uh, they do like to be watered, uh, but they don't like to be drenched and just like soak in, uh, stuck in soaking water. But they also don't like to, ha like to have long periods of dryness. So um, this year I've had all these things in my drip system. I have a patio drip system that just every morning, early in the morning, it goes on for about six minutes. And uh, with the, uh, the little nozzle I have on here, it just kind of wets the soil. And then uh, with the heat of the summer and just the warmth that we have here in, our, in my area at least, uh, I'm in the Seattle area. These things will uh, have plenty of water, but they pretty much dry out over that uh, day. And as they head into the evening, they're not sitting in soaking water. Then the next morning they get watered. So um, now as the temperatures start changing, it starts getting more, uh, more cool, uh, kind of a July to August heat starts going away. Um, I will go and switch it to about every three days, four days, I'll water these things. But uh, they do like to be watered, but not too much. So that's kind of the watering stuff. Um, they are a fairly heavy feeder if you want to keep these things really vibrant. Uh, in fact, that's one of the problems I'm going to talk about is uh, if, if you don't fertilize them, uh, they'll still stay alive pretty easily, but you're going to see they start, uh, they're not nearly as full, as vibrant, and then the flowers d definitely are reduced pretty heavily. So um, I go through and about every week I go and put, uh, I have some uh, miracle Grow. I'll put it in the watering can and just go through and water these things. So when I do the rest of my kind of patio flowers, and uh, that seems to do great with these. Um, sometimes I skip it and I forget about it for a week and I'll come back uh, and they're fine. But uh, they do like to be fertilized um, a bit every week. And you don't have to do the full strength. You know, if you give them a little bit each week or if you have a kind of a slow release thing and you put it in there, that'll be fine um, as far as my experience with these things. Um, and then also pruning as far as the care. Uh, you don't have to prune these things very often, but if they start getting too tall or if you want to kind of keep these more in that smaller uh, range, uh, you can go through and just cut these back. 
Uh, typically, you're looking for a little uh, little leaf node that has, uh, if you can see a little bit of uh, uh, kind of a little node about to, to uh, shoot out, that's kind of a good spot. Go right above that, and it'll kick out some new branches uh, and kind of get a little bit more fullness in there. Uh, let me zoom in here and show you a little bit of what I mean by that. So if I were wanting to prune this back a bit, um, I could go and follow this line down, and each of these right above the leaf uh, leaf node there, uh, I could cut any of these back, and uh, they would shoot out new growth. So, you know, I don't want to cut this back now, but if I wanted to trim this, I could just right above there, you know, quarter inch above it, I'd just cut that, and it'll kick up some new growth. So you can actually see uh, this one here; it's it's starting to get a little bit lanky, um, kind of going out to the side. I could probably cut back some of those down at the bottom that are shooting out, but I like this. I like the shape of it right now, but again, you can go for a little bit more full or more compact look depending on your setting. Pruning is not a problem. They'll, uh, they'll survive the pruning and kick out no gr new growth in, in no time at all. And what we have here is the red tiger uh, butylon. So this is probably, I would say, the most popular one, the one that catches the eye the most times. Like it's a lot of remarks, uh, and I've loved this one for years. Uh, in fact, uh, my first one a little while back when I went to get it a couple years ago, I went to buy my wife a, a red tiger. We'd both seen this over and over again in the nursery. And we're like, oh, we got to get one of those for the house or for the yard. We weren't quite sure what it was about. Well, anyway, we go and pick one up. Um, and it was not flowering at the time, and so we're like, okay, that's all right. It's about to, about to go and burst, and we saw the little flowers starting out, and uh, then all of a sudden, as the flowers came out, they were solid red. It was our, that lucky, uh, the lucky red lantern uh, variety, and it was beautiful, but we're like, wait, I guess the veins will come out later, and sure enough, uh, you know, time went by, and nope, Denver changed, and uh, someone must have switched the tags in the nursery or something, but... Uh, Anyway, so we ended up with that one and then came back the next year because they were out of those when we came back and uh, got uh, the Red Tiger. And we've really loved this one. I'm going to talk about a problem that I've had recently with this particular bush. You're going to notice that uh, there's not a lot of flowers on here. And so I'll tell you about some tips I've, uh, I've got for you because some things I've learned about this that has kind of helped bring this back to some flowering. These are some new flowers that just came back. Uh, but uh, just a beautiful flower with those red uh, veins kind of going through the yellow oranges color and that kind of that middle part that hangs down. Just a great little lantern umbrella look and uh, the hummingbirds love these. So um, again, these things, they can grow anywhere from just a couple feet to uh, eight to 12 feet tall, depending on how you uh, have them and kind of your, your growing environment. But um, the kind of the two main ones that I have here in my yard right now, uh, these are both about six feet tall and I'll prune them back down to about two feet uh, after the winter is kind of ending. Uh, but both of these, because I'm in the Seattle area where it gets uh, colder, freezes during the winter, uh, these things typically will not survive uh, real cold temperatures. And so I'll move these things into the protection of my shed. Um, I'll leave it by a window and it's, uh, it typically stays in there 55 to 60 in the winter. Um, it'll warm up every once in a while to 70, but um, kind of stays around that 55, 60 range. And uh, these things will kind of just sit there. They'll kind of fall asleep for the winter. Uh, not much as far as growth. In fact, there's no growth, uh, no flowering. They'll just kind of be green. Uh, might lo lose a couple leaves. And then as the temperatures start warming, um, I'll prune these things back fairly heavily. Uh, because I'm kind of not, I don't want these things to go much more than five, six feet tall. And then these things will start growing new growth, new leaves, and uh, flowers will just start kicking in about a month later. And they're just beautiful and they'll go the rest of the year, unless you have a problem. And I'll tell you about that in a moment. But first, I want to talk about propagation. The basics for my propagation that I like to use is I either like to use one of these like uh, clear containers, pop bottle, this is I think a water jug or juice container or something, um, with the bottom cut off. And then um, I'll have the lid available that I'll sometimes have on there. I'll talk about that in a moment or I'll have it off depending on uh, kind of the warmth of the room they're in and the humidity, that sort of thing. But um, I typically will have something like this in a pot uh, where I can kind of push that down about a half inch or so and it creates this kind of little greenhouse effect in there for growing, um, you know, the plants here or I've done, done this with roses and other things. Uh, if I have something small like this, like I've been doing several of these, and I've got a large clear tote where I basically put it in a, um, put it upside down. I've got a couple holes on the top just for a little bit of ventilation, and it creates a, kind of a larger greenhouse effect. Uh, just kind of something simple for most of us backyard gardeners who don't have a nice greenhouse, that sort of thing. But uh, uh, so I've got my kind of my setting. Uh, the actual soil, uh, I'm not using a potting soil. What I use for these is generally a mix of mostly bark and sand, and it's kind of like a fine, uh, fine bark. Um, I had some bark from a past thing where I basically filtered out all the big chunks. Um, in fact, I don't know if you can see this here, but uh, this one has all these big chunks in there, and then all the stuff I filtered out 
I have that in a bucket and I use that for my propagation. So it's mostly bark with some sand put in there. That way it's well, dra uh, well draining, uh, doesn't really hold. Um, just like a drenched kind of feel of the moisture, but uh, with that bark in there, it'll uh, it'll keep it moist. So uh, typically what I'm doing is I'm getting a little cutting with two leaves, and um, I'll break off the bottom, uh, actually I should say, I'm taking a cutting with like four or five leaves, breaking off the bottom ones, keeping about two, and uh, pushing that down into the soil. And uh, I've used a rooting um, hormone or rooting powder. Uh, you can get various ones on Amazon or at your, uh, a lot of your gardening centers. Uh, but I've also found just as much luck, at least with these things, uh, without them. So um, I still use it because I've got it, but uh, I've had a few of these where I didn't use it and they took off with roots also. So I don't think it's necessary. You might have a little bit higher percentage of success. Uh, but typically what I'm doing is I'm dipping that in there, uh, dipping that in the powder, putting it in the soil, uh, getting it watered one time, putting it into a covered environment where it will stay nice and humid, and then I periodically will come back, uh, whether it's every three, four days or once a week, and just do a spray bottle in there if it looks like it's starting to um, kind of lighten up on the moisture. And then about every, oh, week to two weeks, I might go in there and give a, a light watering depending on how the, um, the soil feels. But if it feels at all damp, uh, I just let that stay until I uh, get some root growth. And then at some point, and uh, in the case of like these ones here, I think it was about a month, uh, three, four weeks, I tipped them over, I saw some roots starting to come out, put them back, back in the pot, and then just about a week or two weeks ago, I uh, went ahead and tipped them upside down and there was plenty of roots hitting all the different edges of the pot and that's when I went and resized those into these little bigger things. So for starters, let's go ahead and get a cutting that I can use. So let me take you over and let's get a cutting. All right, so I've got this branch right here that's kind of shooting off to the side. It does have flowers, looks beautiful, but uh, it's kind of going the wrong direction for I want my plant. Now, um, I would typically go in here and just prune it, so let me show you that. And uh, where I pruned it, I went pretty heavy back there. There's a leaf node, but uh, I don't need this thing shooting out to the side. I want this thing to kind of go more up in a uh, kind of a Voss vase shape, kind of V shape. But uh, I've got this now big old chunk that I can take a couple cuttings off. So we'll take this back to the table. All right, so I've got my large cutting. I'm just going to use this as our sample for today. And uh, this is from the, uh, the red one I've got over there. And uh, you typically, for your cutting, you're looking for about a five, six inch uh, piece. And I uh, got a little flexibility in there. You don't want any flour, so I'm going to go and cut off my flowers. All right, so for my cutting, I want to keep uh, probably two leaves that are going to be above the soil, and then I'm going to break off these, bottom two, and then right below that uh, lower leaf node, I'm going to cut that. Get that a little closer. So about a quarter inch or so. Can I bring that in there? And uh, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of peel off those little bits of the bud, the growth, and I'll just drop that in the soil. And uh, you'll probably see roots kicking out here. You might see, I'll have, uh, this will be right around the soil too, but uh, most of the roots will come from this bottom part. And so, if you're gonna use the rooting uh, hormone and you've got that, you can do it a couple different ways. I'll typically go and, and just kinda get that on there nice. And then I'm gonna drop it in my soil, kind of poke it down. You can take a pencil if you want and push it down, you make the hole and then push it down like that. And then when I put this lid on top of it, with this one kind of sticking out, it's not quite as desirable, I'm, uh, but I'll kind of guide the leaves into this like such. Push that down. And this thing is pretty well ready to go. I'll go through and water it, give it one watering so the, the soil's wet, it'll drench out. So then I have my lid and usually for the first couple weeks, I'll keep this lid on or maybe uh, when I have it, I put it in my, uh, my window in my shed, um, not getting any sun, but again, getting lots of light. And I might have this kind of crooked here so it's got a little bit of uh, air going through, but uh, this thing will quickly go and get moisture in it. You'll see kind of the condensation on the outside and uh, it'll, uh, kick out some roots in a couple weeks. All right, so you can see here, I just wanted to show you what uh, the roots look like. So this is off of those seven week old ones and I went ahead and resized them into a larger pot. Um, I've got some soil, now this is actually potting soil down here and this is my kind of bark mixture. Uh, so it'll start getting some real soil in there and I'll drop that back in there, get it going. Put my big pieces of bark in there and this thing is ready to go. It'll just continue to grow and 
hopefully in the next, I don't know, a couple weeks I'll get some flowers on here. But uh, again, uh, this is a one week old one. I just did, did this about a week ago. It really hasn't started much growth. I, I think I can see some little buds starting to kick, but uh, that could have been from what was there before. We'll watch it. And uh, I'll go after about a month or so and flip it over, see if I can see some roots starting to creep down. Usually if I can see a root kicking out of the, the bottom, that's when I flip it and open it up. Um, kind of take a look at some of these, but uh, pretty simple to propagate. The last thing I did want to cover was about problems. Now, uh, these are fairly simple to grow, but there's something I've learned uh, this year, especially with this red tiger. Uh, this thing started out blo uh, blooming really well. I had lots of flowers on there, lots of these uh, kind of veiny red tiger fly flowers going. It was doing really well and uh, started heating up in the temperature. So I pushed this thing back. And so my patio cover above me comes and right up right above my head, that's where the cover ends. And so I get uh, morning sun that comes through here and then the moment that sun hits that roof, you know, everything there gets shade and it kind of builds out this direction. Well, with this red tiger behind me, I pushed it back into the shade more so it, so it wasn't getting as much sun during the heat of the day and uh, kept it under there for, it's been probably five, six weeks that I've had it under there. And uh, I noticed back then that, uh, I noticed a couple weeks ago, hey, this thing is not uh, producing the flowers. In fact, I can't find a single flower on this. Uh, they had all fallen off and kind of uh, finished off. Now there's still green growth, uh, still you know nice and healthy, but no flowers. And so I was thinking about that and went and pushed it back out here to the side, uh, kind of the edge of my patio. I uh, probably gave it about an hour and a half more sun. And all of a sudden, um, I started seeing new flower buds kicking and there's a bunch of flower buds all throughout this kind of top area and I've got some of my first ones that have uh, kind of kicked into gear but uh, there is the importance these things do like sun and uh, they like a good amount of sun to keep those flowers going but not the heat 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 hot 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 uh, part of the day so uh, big problem I've seen is just uh, placement and that's the case with a lot of plants I've had that with hydrangeas um, a lot of a lot of flowering plants uh, do need some sun or lots of sun depending on what they are um, or you won't get the flowers they'll stay alive but they're not gonna um, thrive in that way so that's one thing I've also seen uh, with watering that um, if I let these things start drying out too much they really do become spindly and uh, don't do as well um, kind of starts to wilt so they'd like the, the moisture that's been an issue I've had um, there's been uh, I've heard people talk a lot about spider mites and the only place I've ever seen um, any sort of like insect getting on these this just happened and uh, it was one of these uh, one of these starts in fact let me see if I can kind of get it in here but you can see something was nibbling right there uh not really in focus but uh something was nibbling at that leaf there and i've got uh, that one and another one um first sign i've seen of anything and now I, I don't see any little bugs around there i'm gonna watch these nothing else has been touched yet so i don't know if something kind of tried it out and realized uh, it wasn't their flavor but um i've heard spider mites could be a, a big deal with these and then uh, the last thing is about the fertilizing. I know I talked about that earlier, but uh, they are a fairly heavy feeder if you want those things growing, um, you know, nice healthy leaves and lots of flowers. So uh, do keep these things fertilized. If you're one of those kind of people that just doesn't spend a lot of time out in the yard, um, you know, you might go and put a slow release thing on there and then make sure these are in a spot where uh, you'll either remember to put some water on them once a while, in a while or uh, if you have a sprinkler that goes, that sort of thing, that will help them out. Um, so uh, not too difficult to grow, beautiful flower. And if you have any questions, throw those in the chat there. I'm sure I'll have some future videos on these as, I, as I'm learning more about them and just enjoying them. I've got hopes this next spring to go out and get some uh, other colors and kind of see uh, what happens with them. But uh, hopefully this was helpful. So have a good life.